All right, welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. And I'm Andrew. And today we've got a whole bunch of nothing, which is always a great place to start. But we've also got some uh, smartphone rumors that we're just going to round all up here since we're about to dive off into the deep end of all the smartphones coming out in the second half of the year. And uh, talk about Elon opening up supercharging for all, which would be kind of cool. And at the end, we have a little game. I have a keyboard off screen. We'll explain that in a second. Yeah. But uh, that's that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, I think we're going to start off with smartphone rumors. Uh, so we've kind of made the decision here that every time we're writing news, uh, what we want to talk about on the podcast, we're lately we've been kind of neglecting smartphone rumors because, you know, they pop up every week it seems like but it's like this one little tiny detail that kind of just feels like getting a phone in the news cycle again and it's really not that interesting um, i don't it's exhausting it's exhausting yeah, like exactly try to cover and talk about every little thing especially because most of the earliest rumors about stuff are either completely unsubstantiated or yeah. wrong it turned out to be wrong and then the other half of that is a lot of companies just love using the slow steady leak I'll do air quotes here, leak of like random features or specs of their thing mm -hmm. as press. And it's just sort of annoying to talk about it over and, and over and over. So I just leave it to the game. end. I mean, this is why we're talking about nothing for the first time uh, on the podcast in a while. So, uh, yeah, but there are, I mean, we're going to, let's see, second half of the year, we expect um, pretty much all of the, some of the biggest, usually Galaxy S is the only one that's not the second half of the year, but all of the biggest smartphones to come out. Yeah, we're probably sure. going to see Pixel. We're probably going to see Galaxy Note. We're going to see whatever foldables they come out with. We're probably going to see like a, a lot of the like sort of mid to high range flagship stuff because we always see the flagships, but we also got the new like Primo flagship seven to $900 category too. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about a lot of the rumors that, uh, that usually come out around then. iPhone, yeah. of course, is one of them. I mean, it's, it's smartphone season coming up. That's what we generally call it. We're at the last, this episode will go out on the 30th of July. So we're busting into August and I, we've already seen uh, invites for Samsung go out. And usually the Samsung Should is start the there? start of, yeah, we can do that. That's usually the start of smartphone season. Yeah. So we're getting into it. I mean, we've talked a lot about June and July being pretty slow, but we're, we're about to be not slow anymore. It's getting into our busy season. Yeah. So they, they have their, their invite go out for unpacked. It's the most obvious uh, theme possible oh, there's yeah. two foldables right if you look at the thing there's a larger foldable that's the galaxy fold then there's a smaller foldable that's the galaxy flip the hot Z dog flip. and the hamburger yeah. exactly and so i don't know we i'm sure there's rumors about what the specifics of them will be but i'll i'll go over a little bit what i'm looking forward to yeah so the first main thing is the big one the galaxy fold had an awesome upgrade on the outside screen it went to 120 hertz on the inside screen and I think matched it on the outside, right? Or what do we have on the outside? I'm forgetting already. Don't remember exactly. I do know they got rid of like the, you know, the the big camera bump on the inside of the phone. The outside yeah. didn't have that awful bezel. It was big a form factor huge improvements. Jump, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this time, I'm curious to see if they can now start to get it to be a little bit more thin, a little more wieldy in the hand. For sure. It's probably going to be tough because we also are concerned about battery. Mm -hmm. We're also concerned about a huge seven-inch screen plus an outside screen and how that will all fit together in a thin, small package. But I think that's the inevitable evolution of these folding form factors is getting closer to the regular candy bar form factor. Yeah, exactly. So I'm curious to see what they do with that. Uh, I think there's also a rumor about a pen. Is that right? Yeah, well, so there's also the Flip 2, which like... I think the main gripe about the original Flip was that the screen on the outside, everyone liked the screen on the Razer better oh, yeah. than the Flip um, because it's just Way a better. small little notification thing where it feels like if you think about old Flip phones, like they used to have a little bigger one with time and maybe you could read notifications on it and stuff like that. So it just seemed like Motorola went the better way on that. So, I mean, if I had to pick what I would like in improved on the Flip 2 would be a bigger outside screen. I think that's the obvious one. Big outside screen on the new Flip. Yeah, okay, um, I hope to see that. So I do have a rumor about a potential. So while a bunch of these rumors came out, Samsung let out a press release kind of confirming some of them and also okay. adding a couple little extra things. So right now it seems like we've pretty much confirmed that there will be a Fold, fl a, fold a Flip, a Galaxy smartwatch, and a Buds 2. Now, they also mentioned that there is going to be S Pen support, and there's a picture of an S Pen case for the Fold. 
S pen case for the fold. Which okay. now, if you take that as a rumor, I don't know if you want to dissect that first or go a little further and then also see that there is zero rumor about the note. We might be getting into that thing we talked about months and months ago of are we going to see a note at all this year? Right. I'm still in the camp of this means nothing. The note is here to stay. Okay. Do you think a note comes out this event? Uh, I don't know about this event. I mean, they okay. only tease folding things. I think it'll happen this year. But the fact that it's going to have to put the S Pen in a case to oh, yeah. carry it around at all, because mm -hmm. carrying around an S Pen is terrible. It's awful. Oh, yeah. it, I mean, you have it. You can lose it easily. You put it in your backpack. It can snap in half. It's just not a fun thing. Mm -hmm. So by a mile, the best way to use and carry an S Pen is to have a Galaxy Note where it yes. slides into the side. In what world do you completely end the Galaxy Note but keep the S Pen around with a horrible accessory that it slots into the side of a case? I feel like that's just a dumb idea. So I don't know if we see a Note at this event. Okay. Probably not. But I really still don't think they're getting rid of the Note. Now, this is though, this is generally when the note comes out, though, correct? Like, this is the, the, the mid August is generally no event. The folds and flips have come on the, the backside of, of regular events. I think so. I, be I believe that's because it's normally we get the S series in like February, March, and we get the note series in August. Those yeah. are generally Samsung's two events. We did the last year, they did the S20 FE, but uh, was that even an event or was that just a couple of brief? It just got announced, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, now, I do have to say, Going back a little bit on what you said about the case, we did have the S Pen case on the, the S21 Ultra, correct? Yep. Now, that I hated. Mm -hmm. I still don't love this one. Now, if you're picturing the the one on the fold, imagine just like a leather case on the back of the fold opened and right where the crease would be or the hinge, there's basically a little place to throw your pen there. So I do think this is slightly better. You're mm -hmm. already, if you have the fold, you're assuming you have like an unwieldy phone most of the time anyway. So you're adding a little bit extra to that. It doesn't really get in the way of your use when it's unfolded. But I, other than that, I would completely agree with you. It's the best places inside the phone. It's, and it's also better it. inside the phone because then you can have an active S Pen. Mm -hmm. Then you can charge it inside the phone. And then you, you have a better just... You don't build the screen around working with the S Pen. Lots of your users will never use the S Pen, so don't worry about like maximizing latency or minimizing latency, I should say. Yeah. But obviously, if you buy a Galaxy Note, these are going to be people who have the S Pen everywhere they go, so it's mm -hmm. built around the S Pen. So the uh, the S Pen last year was passive. It didn't work as well in the S21 Ultra as it did in the Note. So it would <laughs> it would shock it's me if they got rid of the Note, but hey. Here we are. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, we've been surprised by weirder things before, so. But I'm always surprised by Samsung adding something weird. It's never oh, like Samsung. Fair. Samsung finally decided to minimize their profile of products. Like, when have they ever? True, that's minimized a very good their point. Footprint? I mean, you made like basically a whole video about how Samsung is consistently like hitting every single price range of every. Like, they're just putting everything out. Um, yeah, I do have to also think about and now. They did say also in one of their releases that the new folds will have, uh, the screen will have increased durability. But I still like, it's not really much. after seeing what we've seen, just an S Pen in general on a folding screen makes me cringe a little bit. Yeah, interesting. So the first folds have had somewhat soft displays. Obviously, they have to very fold in half. Soft. I think you're being way well. The first very one, nice about so that. the first one was soft to the point where it was like easy to damage with your finger. Mm -hmm. The second one was improved and it was better. And the Z Flip actually, not that we're talking about Z Flip right now, but had an even better, harder display. But now I'm thinking, okay, if this fold is going to have support for a pen, which is like a fine tip, mm -hmm. not sharp, but much sharper than a finger. I mean, yeah. It's going to have to have a hard enough display surface to reject like... Like that dent. Like Indents, if you drag, yeah. if you drag an S Pen today on a Galaxy Fold, you will leave permanent lines in that top layer of the display, which is not great. So they're no, they're it's obviously awful. they're obviously gonna have to change either the pen itself or the display. So maybe they're that far ahead on the new display that I mean, it's actually hard. I think that if that is the case, then that means they increase these screens by a ton. Because I mean, if you just think about it you're generally going to be putting more pressure on an S Pen than your finger, and you're doing it on a way, 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 way smaller surface area. So it mm -hmm. is very capable of damaging the screen. Um, yeah. I can't even imagine trying to do an S Pen on the original Fold. It would, um, wouldn't be it a good would idea. Just, it would last one day, I think, yeah. or one session with the S Pen. But 
That'd be interesting. I to don't see, know. Though. That'd be interesting. I mean, it's the biggest canvas you'd want in theory if you want to take notes, if mm-hmm. you want to draw stuff. Then the Galaxy Fold is the biggest, best screen in any phone to do that. So it seems like that would be cool. I'm gonna chalk it up as it's making me um, excited about it. I'm, I'm gonna look at this optimistically and say that I think the screen is going to be much better this year. I mean, if you look at the jump between the one and two, it was huge. So if we can have a similar sized improvement between the two and the three, the three is gonna be looking really nice. Yeah. So let's. I'll be optimistic about it and probably let down in a couple weeks. So <laughs> fair. Well, uh, we'll see that. We'll see the flip too, and maybe we'll see a note that event is happening this year in uh, probably about two weeks. Two weeks, I think. Yeah. All right, then what else are we talking about? Uh, We did a video on the iPhone 13 model, so we Mm -hmm. might as well talk iPhone. So yes, probably around September 12th is usually when when it happens. It's like the second week of September, we'll get the new iPhones. Did a video on the iPhone 13 models, and I mean, only a couple really interesting things were on those models. Again, there's four of them. There's an iPhone 13 mini, an iPhone 13, an iPhone 13 Pro, and an iPhone 13 Pro Max, Mm -hmm. and we assume they're probably called the 13 because we skipped 11s and there's probably not going to be a 12s out of nowhere so probably 11 12 13 and there's ports on these phones so there's a there's a rumor floating around and i think it's more than a rumor i think there's a lot of momentum and thought about apple going with no port this year we talked to mark yeah. Irwin about this he said it was aiming for as early as possible maybe this year but there's ports on these models and it seems like you know if apple was going to go portless like right now they would want to have MagSafe and wireless charging completely ready to replace ports. Yeah. And it just didn't quite get there yet. It's not quite there. I I mean, I do have to say, like, yeah, exactly. When they released MagSafe, it seemed like this big total, like, shakeup in the industry, or at least the, like, charging aspect of phones. But, I mean, we're around a lot of tech people. I don't see MagSafe being used. I, I think it's had some really cool accessories. I think there's a lot of awesome car mounts that it's been really sick for, but in terms of general charging, I don't know. I don't well, see yeah. it all over the place. It doesn't. I think that's the thing is uh, if Apple really wanted to like flip everyone to MagSafe, they would have already gotten rid of the port. But the thing about wireless charging is it's an optional accessory for every other phone. Mm-hmm. Every other phone has a port. Lots of people charge with the cable. But if they happen to get a wireless charging accessory, maybe they spend extra for one or they happen to have one at home or something, then once in a while, they wireless charge. But like they also have wired charging anytime they want. And so that's available. It's been available on the iPhone. And when they added MagSafe, it was like, oh, cool. Now you can get one of those more expensive Apple wireless chargers and it'll snap to the back like big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't really drive this whole huge adoption of everyone in the world charging their phones with MagSafe. Yeah. It's just another version of wireless charging so getting rid of the port <laughs> this is kind of like the headphone jack no, no, situation. this is exactly what i was going to compare it to it's yeah. like the headphone jack situation if you want to advance bluetooth audio as quickly as possible you need to release your own amazing headphones and then get rid of the headphone jack the in the same year from under them, yeah. and that's what they did they got rid of it in the same year and they made their own he- wireless headphones and suddenly the entire ecosystem and all the all the minnows all the remora sharks <laughs> around apple were making their best bluetooth wireless headphones um this time it didn't happen at the same time so we got magsafe but they didn't get rid of the charging port yet and maybe uh-huh. another year they continue to not get rid of the charging port and of course we're thankful that they're not getting rid of the charging port but that means magsafe isn't going to take that massive leap forward that it needs to. If you'd rewound a year and imagine last year with the iPhone 12s, we get 5G, we get these new iPhone designs, we get MagSafe, we get no port, everyone's gonna be using MagSafe chargers. Mm-hmm. And so because everyone's using MagSafe stuff, everyone needs MagSafe compatible accessories, suddenly that ecosystem is to the moon. To the moon! Everyone's making all of their best MagSafe stuff because that is the clear focus. And obviously, we saw a lot of really cool stuff. I really like the Moment Car Charger. I really like uh, the battery banks we've seen. But it's not quite at the level that we'd want it to be. MagSafe is only 15 watts wireless charging. Okay. And, you know, wireless charging is has always been slower than wired charging. And iPhone users have been very used to slow charging for a long time. But the fact that every other phone wireless charging is doing it at least at 15 watts, usually at 20 sometimes at 45, a lot of 
higher end ones like this phone does it at 65 on the right charger and maybe we'll see some soon doing it at like 100 plus watts wireless charging it doesn't seem like building your whole future around 20 watt wireless 15 watt wireless charging is uh is that great <laughs> i would really yeah. like to be able to fast charge my phone and if you get rid of the port and you only have magsafe and chi charging you you've capped your your charging rate at 15 watts which isn't great 12 watts on the mini by the way yeah, it's funny because I was just about to make an argument and that kind of st stopped what I was going to say. I'm going to say it anyways, and sure. I'm going to know now that that is probably the main argument against it. But I was just saying, like, if we think back of getting rid of the headphone jack, that was pretty early in the truly wireless era, or just wireless, maybe not totally wireless, but, you know, truly wireless, the big surge in wireless headphones. Yeah. And even, like, Bluetooth audio in cars, like, is becoming more of a, a common thing is basically a, a standard thing now, but that was earlier and forced everyone into it. Wireless charging has been around for a long time. I think right now, if you told me my if my phone didn't have a port, almost nothing would change about my everyday life. The only time I plug this in is in the car, mm -hmm. and I've gotten to a point where I barely even plug it in the car unless I'm road tripping now because I just have my wireless charger at my desk at home, at my desk here, and next to my bed at home. Yeah. As, as long as I can just... They're not fast. I mean, they are Samsung wireless chargers, so they're faster than the 12 watts. But generally, they sit on the charger for a while. Trickle charging. So, like, yep, it's just a nice passive charge throughout my day, um, as long as the battery life is good, which the Pixel's been letting me down on that a lot. Um, I think I think I would be more ready, and I bet more people would be more ready to go no port than to go into the wireless headphone. I think I think you're living in the future Apple sees for everyone, mm -hmm. which is everyone has- a two-year-old phone though too. Right, but everyone will have to get, will have to buy a wireless charger yeah. for all the points in their life where they charge. In the car, not a lot of people can wireless charge in the car. So if you can't wireless charge in the car, you can't charge in the car. Yeah, right? don't they make a bunch more though? They make car mounts, car mounts now that are essentially just wireless chargers, They right? do, I but do you have to, to buy get one. one of those. Yeah. A lot of people already have a cable in their car. They'll have to switch and buy a wireless charger for their car. A lot okay. of people wireless charge at home. They will have to buy a wireless charger at home too. A lot of people wireless charge maybe at work, but if you don't have one at work, that's another wireless charger you have to buy. So yeah, it, you, you can get to that point today with phones, but you know, I think that's probably what Apple would see as their main reason. Battery health trickle charging is great for battery health we just want to have people have wireless chargers trickle charging everywhere and we're set so here here would be my one you know if we want to go one more step further on that not not even so much but like mm. if you're making if apple is taking away your headphone jack the the barrier of entry into wireless headphones at that point is 129 dollars right that's when it was the original airpods 129 really Right? Was that the starting price for AirPods? I, think, I guess probably something like I that. I think maybe Adam can confirm with us on that. But right mm -hmm. now, for wireless charging, Anchor on Amazon, 100,000 reviews of five stars, 12 bucks. Well, yeah, but that's Anchor on Amazon. So you could get well, Anchor yeah. on Amazon wireless earbuds, too, at that time. Yeah, but still probably more expensive than replacing all your wire your chargers with wireless chargers. I mean, like... I mean, Apple's going to make their primo expensive You're saying staying in the full-blown Apple ecosystem? Yeah, okay, Apple should their... probably update that. But even yeah. they sell third-party wireless chargers, no? Yeah, but like some of the $90 ones, like they're not going to sell like $29 <laughs> wireless chargers um, when they know people buy $1,000 phones. So Fair. Yeah. No, I think there is there is a world, like if you want to fast forward into that reality right now, you can just stop using the port on your iPhone today and you can get ahead yeah. of that disappointment. I think if you are an iPhone user who plans to stay in the iPhone ecosystem, you should start making that adjustment. Yeah, I, yeah. Think as, I think a lot of people probably have. Um, for Apple, it does make sense though, because like you said, they're selling more expensive stuff. The average user who's just buying all their stuff at the Apple store is going to just continue to buy Mm -hmm. essentially overpriced. I mean, like when you can get Anchor for 12 bucks, maybe the Apple one's a little better, but it's going to be 40 bucks. I mean, yeah. MagSafe is $40. so It's not going to be that much better. It's still yeah. 15 watts. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I would rather, I think the barrier for entry, maybe for us techies is easier, but for the average person is, yeah. It's a yeah. lot to go out and pay for charging. Like paying for charging cables isn't fun. Like paying for wireless <laughs> headphones is a lot of fun. Paying for a puck that charges your phone is not yeah, fun. Charging's boring. Yeah. Fair. Well, what else do we have coming out this year? We've got uh, Pixel's going to happen as well. Usually we see that it's like an October thing, and we know 
we know there's going to probably be like a Pixel 6, mm-hmm. but we also, we've been waiting for Pixel 5a, and that's just yes. sort of been floating around in Ether. Remember there was like a tweet that Google confirmed it wasn't canceled and then also never announced it? They yeah. They just sort of It was shared. like something along the lines of we were all wondering where it was, and then there was a bunch of rumors that it was totally canceled, and then I think there was some confirmation that it was only coming to the U.S. and Japan. I think, I mean, it's obviously because of the chip shortage. Like, that's sure. got to, I mean, that's the reason for everything yeah. uh, lately. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of Pixel rumors, the Pixel 6 we talked a little bit about already. I don't want to dive too deep into that because we've, We've said why we're excited for their their own that white first party OEM, project. yeah. yeah. Um, and then, but be, I'm more interested in Pixel Five A, and the reason I'm so interested in it right now is we haven't seen it. We're assuming six is going to come out in a couple months. It's usually October, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they should just skip Pixel Five A, <laughs> and if they have the resources, they should just release the budget option during the six event and just call it the six A, and just finally get on the same page. Because I always think it's weird that the newest Pixel releases and then the lower grade one releases after as the same number. And I always have people saying like, oh, should, uh, I remember one time my friend was had the Pixel 3 and the 3A came out. He's like, should I get the 3A? No, the 3 is better than the 3A. Right, the but, stagger. But he saw it coming out as six months later and expected it to be an upgrade. So right. that always, to me, I think it's just been kind of confusing. It's and I would like, like to see it. Yeah, OnePlus, and we might talk about them for a second, but they have the, the T-series and the Pro series and then the T-Pro. Wow. So yeah. they, they one year had like OnePlus 7, then OnePlus 7T, or maybe not the T, but they had 8T and then 8T Pro. And there was just like a... A mm-hmm. slight confusion about like which it was the A A Pro A T A T Pro yeah and you're like well it's called eight that's also wow what a name the One Plus Eight T Pro sounds like eighty but it's eight T <laughs> and then One Plus is just confusing by itself um, yeah we may so maybe we'll see a One Plus Eight T oh, in wait. this in the second half of this year ninety ninety sorry so we're on One Plus Nine One Plus Nine Pro <laughs> ninety nine T <laughs> Jesus One Plus Nine T could come out in the second half of this year. But maybe. OnePlus is also weird because it used to be the T was always the upgrade from the regular one, right? But then mm-hmm. wasn't it last year the 8T was like not better than the it was lower. 8 Pro or something like that? It was it was very confusing. It was, didn't it go like if you were doing it from lowest specs to highest specs, it would be 8, 8T, 8 Pro. I don't think and then there I was don't an... think there was an 8T Pro. Was right, there, there was, was an 8T 7T Pro. And se- or was it 7T and 7T McLaren edition or something? I feel like we... Um, there was a 7T Pro McLaren Okay, edition. but uh, there was no 8T Pro, right? So no. last year was when they switched it up? Okay, right. that's when I was confused. Great. So OnePlus uh, <laughs> may come just... out with, a, with an upgraded version, but the thing about that is they already have the latest chipset in the 8 and the 9 Pro, so I don't know you know, what they would... This is 865 Plus well, already, maybe right? Maybe the T is the, like premium mid-range or whatever we're calling it oh i see maybe you want to stay on the confusing route of it all naming so we'll we'll maybe see pixel stuff we'll maybe see oneplus stuff and gosh there was also a rumor about a you see the surface duo 2 rumor yeah i think we have to talk about it just in general Um, well all i saw was a that's all it is a possible model with a camera bump on the back and you know what's funny? When we went and first saw Panos way back in the day, like a mm-hmm. full year and a half ago, however long ago it was, they had a bunch of different uh, prototype Surface Duos. Yep. Panos had one in his pocket that had a big camera bump on it. And that wasn't the final release one. We didn't shoot video of that one, but I found that interesting because the final one they released had no rear camera. Yeah. But it's in our video. If you go back and watch it, I'm pretty sure there's at least yeah, a shot or two of it. Yeah, he's holding it, I think, quickly. Um, yeah. And so what was... so? First of all, the one we're seeing right now is the rumor is a three camera module with a gigantic bump. I'm saying like, I mean, Samsung level, Huawei level bump pretty much on the back of the Surface Duo, which is one of the thinnest phones even folded together. So I can only imagine this bump is at least as thick as I can't tell how thick it is from this picture. Uh, If you click on the link, there's a couple, there's this short video. Oh, there's a video. Okay, I'm Um, watching this video. So while you watch that, I'll describe like you said, in the original, original uh, like prototype we saw, it was a one camera module on the back, but what it did was it protruded out a little bit, almost like an iPhone 8, and the opposite side had a little indent. So the thing would still fold completely flat. Right, and this, this one doesn't. This will not do that. This <laughs> will be 
significantly open when you close it all the way. It's so like the, a full wedge. The best part, I don't have it with me, but the best part of the Surface Duo was opening it flat and just having it just close yeah. and the magnets would hook and it would just like puff some air out at you and it would just be like perfectly flat and flush and smooth. And now I'm assuming with this new camera bump on the back and the same hinge architecture, you're slamming that camera bump up against the back, yep. which doesn't sound like a good idea. It sounds like you're going to start scratching the other half of the phone. There's no and way they haven't thought about this. This is no, one of those sure. things where like, Endless hours and tons of prototypes are happening behind the scenes, and I wouldn't be shocked if this is one of many prototypes being considered. Yeah, fair. I would just be surprised if this didn't get eliminated pretty quickly because of that. I'm there's no way they haven't thought about that. We'll have to see. I mean, like if we want to talk about this as the Surface, I mean, it's very safe to say the Surface Duo did not do well. You can buy it for like for almost a thousand dollars cheaper than the original MSRP, which I've never seen a phone do that. Thousand dollars off. Yeah. That's wild. Um, and while a lot of reviewers, including us, said the camera, because the camera was the basically just the selfie camera that you flipped out, which is never a good move. I mean, we praise the, the Zen phone being a good selfie camera because it's the rear camera facing forward instead. Yes, yeah, so it's the is, opposite. Exactly. And the camera is definitely not the only issue the Surface had. There were a lot of different issues. So It's putting it nicely. Yeah. I hope that this is not just like, well, if we just put triple cameras on the back, everything will be great. Um, there are a lot of other things I hope if we see a Surface Duo 2 get changed on this. Bezels on the inside, battery life. There are a lot of glitches in terms of the software going between the two screens. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, camera. I'd love to see a better camera. I did appreciate that it folded flat, though. That, Like you said, you said that was the best part of it. Yeah. It probably was the best part of the Duo. Because oh, it was the, the hardware, Duo absolutely. Um, and then I think my other main gripe was even when it was folded in half, it was just too wide for your hands to really, you had to really stretch your thumb out, which meant it was very hard to actually touch stuff on the screen. I can't, it's very hard to tell scale here. It might look a little thinner. It would be awesome if it was a bit thinner um, yeah. in terms of width, not thickness. So a couple things on that. One, um, you know, part of the, the reason Microsoft would give us for not including the camera on the back is they're like, oh, well, our target customer for this doesn't really take that many pictures with their like work device, mm -hmm. which this is their work device. Fine. Um, it would still be nice to have a better camera than a webcam. The other thing is, uh, yeah, I would expect actually the way you mentioned like how wide it is in the hand, I would actually have guessed with, before seeing this, if you asked me how they would improve Surface 2 or mm -hmm. Surface Duo, is they would shrink the body around that screen. Just make the bezels smaller, but keep the screens the same size. So now the whole thing with the same size screens is more hand but wasn't, usable. The screen was generally pretty uh, close to the edges on the outside. It was just an awful bezel on the top and bottom, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a huge top and bottom bezel and then a bit of a side bezel too. Okay. Shrinking the side bezels, they would still be a little wide. Maybe you cut the screens in I a little bit. I think cut the screen in a okay. little tiny bit would be nice. Yeah, but then also the top, yeah. And now I see this. The top this, was awful. It, and it looks like the same aspect ratio generally as the last device. So I'm, I'm not mm. sure. There is, sure. It does look like there's a black version, which looks really sweet. That'd be cool. That would be, be nice. Cool. Uh, if, yeah. Again, great hardware. Only goes so far, but you know. Exactly. I, I'm personally, I was, that was one of the stutteriest 60 hertz devices I've used in an entire year. So I would, I would immediately hope for higher end performance before I even consider anything else about that oh, yeah. phone. You can, you can not improve the cameras at all, and I would have more hope from like an updated chipset and more RAM in that thing. For but. Sure. Nevertheless, we've got a bit more to talk about. We should take a quick break and come back and get into uh, the nothing earbuds and supercharging for all. This episode of Waveform is brought to you by Sennheiser. So while truly wireless earbuds have really exploded in recent years, I feel like no one has put high quality sound as their first priority, but Sennheiser has changed that with their Momentum True Wireless 2. So Sennheiser has always been my go-to when it comes to audio equipment on this channel. I've tested everything from the HD6XX to the HD820 headphones. I've always loved how focused they are on delivering the best sound quality possible. Sennheiser has always put sound first, and so their new Momentum True Wireless 2s deliver the best listening experience and have finally crafted for even the most discerning listener. So you can now switch off your surroundings and dive into that impactful song or important episode with their all new active noise cancellation feature. So the Momentum True Wireless 2 also have a 28 hour battery life so you never have to worry if they'll last the whole day. And if you're looking for something other than earbuds, Sennheiser also has over ear headphones 
and sound bars for all your audio needs. So I can't say I'm surprised CNET called these the earbuds to get if you value sound quality over everything else. So why settle for anything less than great sound? Come hear the difference with Sennheiser. Right now, for my first 100 listeners, go to sennheiser.com slash podcast and use promo code waveform and you'll receive 15% off the Momentum True Wireless 2 earbuds or any of their amazing headphones. So that's 15% off when you go to S-E-N-N-H-E-I-S-E-R dot com slash podcast and use promo code waveform. All right, welcome back. We got to talk about, uh, I want to at least mention this because it's a, it's not, it's yet another article about an Elon tweet, which seems like most articles about Tesla are articles about Elon tweets. They definitely are. Um, but this one is one of the first time we've actually gotten real details on superchargers being opened up to non Teslas. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he he mentioned, you know, maybe later this year. I don't know when it's actually going to happen. I don't. I wouldn't take any date Elon yeah. tweets with any seriousness. But Elon says they're going to open up uh, charging stations to other car makers. And basically, they just need an adapter. Yeah. Um, and some of the you know the details he gave is like, yeah, you'll obviously get better speeds if you're in a Tesla, and you'll get better support if you're in a Tesla, and that's a great reason to get a Tesla. But it's not like they're making some walled garden where you can only use a Tesla on Tesla superchargers, and you can only use you know, yeah, non EVs on non Tesla superchargers. So the overall goal of advancing uh, humanity towards this sustainable energy future is still preserved by not making this walled garden. So mm-hmm. it makes sense with the company's ethos and with the whole point of going electric. Uh, it's just cool to finally get details on it. Um, and I think it would make a big difference as far like, honestly, I, I said this in the Taycan review, like, man, if I could if I could use superchargers, I would definitely switch to this car. Mm-hmm. It's not still true because Plaid Model S is like crushing right now, but... Uh, I think it would make a big deal for a lot of the other superchargers, or sorry, a lot of the other EVs that people would have a hard time charging in a lot of places because there's not, you know, Electrify America chargers around the corner from them. There's not a lot of the other high-powered charging networks, but there are Tesla superchargers in a lot of places. Yeah, as, so he's, I think he's mentioned it once in like 2014 and again in 2018, but if we look at those dates, like, there wasn't a lot of competition out there. So he didn't really have to give them any details on it. We knew it was kind of an idea, but we've all, all been questioning it. So this is the closest he's had to having some like real real details, like you said. Yeah, and he's never given any details. So someone will just ask, I think I might ask at one point, like what happened to other cars being able to use Tesla superchargers? And he'll just go, yeah, they can. Uh, yeah, with like, like well, no real. <laughs> none, none of them do. So like yeah. what happened? And there's never any information about it. So... This is cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. And I think to go off this, this is, I think this in general, as long as it happens, which I think it will, like you said, I don't know about this year because Elon dates are all over the place, but um, this is a huge step forward in EVs in general. And I want to see every EV manufacturer, every charging manufacturer, like go the same route. I, I really don't like when I'm seeing like comp- X company partners with company Y to do charging and like it makes it feel like you're just limiting everything. And especially when the infrastructure is not out there, like in order to grow this infrastructure as fast as possible, if everything can use everything, that's best case scenario because, you know, some parts of the country are probably going to have a better uh, influx of one charger and then a different part of the countries. Like clearly California is going to have way more Tesla superchargers than everything else, but maybe there's some other parts of the country where, you know, GM and a lot of stuff's based in Michigan. So maybe there's going to be more of whoever they're using there and just in general, we don't limit it by putting it all together and letting everyone use everything. And it'll just advance yeah. us further. Yeah. Infrastructure is honestly at least half of the story with electric cars. Of course. And so I, it's always been so uneven. Like if you buy a Tesla, you can charge at literally any electric car charger. You just have an adapter. Yeah. That includes Tesla superchargers, which are everywhere, which in the U.S. anyway are extremely convenient. That includes all the Electrify America chargers. That includes the ones in the front of our building, the ones at a random hotel, like destination chargers, garage, everywhere. If you buy any other EV, you can use whoever they've partnered with and some select that are compatible, Mm -hmm. and you have never been able to use Tesla superchargers. So if you are thinking for more than a second that you're going to do some sort of road trips in your car if you're concerned at all about range anxiety, the obvious choice was buy a Tesla. 
And that restricted a lot of people. Obviously, they're very expensive and not a lot of people want a Tesla. Not a lot of people can buy that. So now the fact that you can get like, a, I don't know, a Mini Cooper EV or something like that or a Hummer EV, whatever you're trying to do mm -hmm. or a Taycan, and you will have much more availability, at least one more high-powered charging network unlocked to you is a big deal for all of them. So I'd say this is a thumbs up for me. Yeah, definitely. And like you said, range, like range anxiety, I would argue is probably more people who are not buying Tesla have range anxiety who are making the switch and they, they're more in tune with their legacy car manufacturers. So that there's way more range anxiety even there because you don't have superchargers. So if you do, it's going to help that. And I think the, the transition between gas stations to electric chargers is one of the biggest hurdles of making people go to EV. So Underrated. this is awesome for everything. Yeah. I'm a thumbs up to that. Yeah. All right. We also uh, wanted to talk about nothing because they're finally out. How many times can we make that joke? It's finally <laughs> out. Nothing earbuds. Um, so the Nothing Ear One True Wireless Earbuds are out. By the time this podcast is out, let's see, the review will be out as well. It should so be, you yeah. can yeah. So you can watch the review of them on the main channel. I've got them right here. We're still as we sh as we're shooting this, we're still making the review. So you haven't tried them yet. Adam's been looking forward to them. Hasn't tried them yet either. And Adam used to literally review headphones. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited to hear what he thinks. So too. I'll give my two cents, but I also want to let you guys give your like raw first impressions yeah, of them sure. on, on the channel. I I am a big fan of this design. This clear but black and white and red design to me, and I'm going to say this in the review, is the best part of these headphones. Um, if you've seen the ads and you've already been familiar with this, but if you're watching the video podcast, like, trust me, they look great. They come in this clear case too, so they're really about the clear aesthetic. And the, the case is pretty big and like, sure, you could probably talk and like nitpick on a lot of this stuff, but keep in mind they're $99 and that lines up with um, Pixel Buds A series, Galaxy yeah. Buds Plus, I think, 99 bucks, somewhere around there. So, you know, it's, it's a habit in my head to immediately go to the best of what I'm used to, but all those headphones are two, $300. So I really have to keep these in context. So I'm going to... Give yep. those to you real quick. So I, I keep thinking like, wow, the, the active noise cancellation is only half as powerful as the AirPods Pro. But that's an unfair comparison because number one, nothing else is that good in earbuds. And number two, those are $300 earbuds. So this is 100 bucks, and I was pretty impressed, but I'll I'll let uh, you handle them, see what you think. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I think the design is really cool. Um, it, I'm sure it was very, very hard to get something like transparent because oh, that is I mean, a big even deal. Carl has said like if I knew that it would be this hard I probably wouldn't have done it um but I like I like the fact that it's got this like kind of different feel to it a lot of earbuds are looking very similar they're usually trying to copy off airpods and because airpods are first and maybe they just were the best design I like the airpods design as well yeah the thing um, about I'll just say the thing about earbuds you is you really as far as design can only change so many things about them. Mm -hmm. Like we've we've arrived at this design, which is like the bud and a stem. And you try to put as much as possible in the bud and then keep it lightweight and you've got a little stem. Some of them don't have a stem, it's just all in the bud. But at a certain point, you just change like color and material and that's it. So the fact that they're going transparent is pretty cool. Um, you might be able to connect to your phone, I don't know. I think they connected it before to my phone, so. Yeah, oh okay. really? Okay, cool. Because there's a there's a there's an ear one app that lets you customize a little bit of stuff. Okay. Um, I want to get just like a quick first impression. So yeah. I'll repair it and talk about it while I'm while you're pairing it. I just want to say going transparent is harder than it sounds. It's not really just as simple as instead of making a white stem, making a clear stem. It's that, but also now if you were to cut apart like AirPods or some sort of like white plastic earbuds or really anything. Inside, there is a seam to like connect each part of the stem together. And the glue behind that on the inside doesn't have to be neat. Like it can be just as long as it works and holds it together, it's fine. So the fact that these are clear and the, the glue inside now has to be neat, mm -hmm. the battery inside now has to be neat. They've done printing like on the PCB board, but also like everything has to line up. The microphones, the magnets, everything on the inside is now actually laid out neatly which wouldn't have been a priority at all if they didn't make them transparent. So it is a lot of extra work, which is pretty interesting to me. But I think the end result is a pretty sweet design. So I I'm love happy. the design. I, I love what they look like. Yeah, they've got kind of like the like hype thing going for them. I mean, like we've seen Beats by Dre work like that. I think these look way cleaner. I think they're different. 
they'll definitely like if you're wearing these and someone notices they'll be like what are those like i've never seen them before and i think that's cool i'm totally on board for for buying things something because it looks good um and at 99 bucks as long as this sounds decent i'm kind of really thing. interested in these oh that's i'm gonna try and play something here so that's the thing about earbuds that i think the industry has slowly noticed over time which is that most people don't really care that much about sound quality. I think anything in this price sounds all right, sounds fine. I think if you're really after sound quality, you can get the Sonys today for 300 bucks and they sound better than any other earbuds I've listened to. But most people aren't specifically spending more for it to sound better. They're spending more for features like water resistance, for wireless charging, for a better case, for active noise cancellation. They're not spending on like the EQ or the codec or the, the higher bitrate audio support, things like that. So it's, it's, it happens to sound pretty decent, I think, but most people are after all the other things over like the actual sound quality. So yeah, the design is like number one on my list. So I'm gonna, I like the design, but I'm gonna try these on. I think my biggest issue with Truly wireless earbuds is they don't fit in my ear very well, so that's. But the AirPods Pro fit really well, so I'm assuming these will. Yeah, they're light. Oh man, is I'm probably playing? gonna talk kind of loud, so I'm gonna try to. Uh, I heard a beep. Yeah, there you go. So there are. Uh, oh, it's gone now. But there are <laughs> usually controls for noise cancellation. Is it's it playing? Like, are you are you messing with me? No. Wait. Oh, okay, I did hear. You. Is it playing music? Yeah, it's playing music, oh. and I can barely hear you, so that's... <laughs> I hope I'm not screaming into the microphone. Sorry, audio listeners. Um, what song was that? Was that like a Dead Mouse remix? Mm -hmm. Okay, it wasn't the normal one, right? No. Okay, I was, I was like, <laughs> no. does this sound really bad, or...? No, no, it was a remix. I, for some reason, the app is really fidgety. I mean, this I have a pre-release APK on my phone, so I'm not shocked that I'm having connectivity inconsistencies <laughs> network connectivity problem <laughs> exactly um okay I, I just i don't want to sit here and just like listen forever while we're yep. on the podcast but like i mean they sound good and they sound fine mm -hmm. i'm not like uh, i i've tried some other ones recently by some companies that are a little more known for well are known for sound at all this is a brand new company they're not known for really anything except for transparent earphones um but they sound fine and for a hundred bucks to me i think you're paying you're paying for a decent sound. It has active noise canceling. I'd say I really thought you were messing with me for a second when your mouth was moving. So um, the noise canceling is not bad. They sound fine. The, the like the design of them sick. I think that's awesome. I uh, I mean, going off of two minutes of having them in my ear, I think I might actually pick these up. To yeah. be completely honest, I'll say three things about the sound. Yeah. One, and I'll articulate all these more in the video, but one. Um, the, the seal and the fit in my ear is pretty good. They're and, light. And they're very light, so mm -hmm. I love that. And the noise cancellation has two levels. There's a maximum and, like, a light noise cancellation. Mm -hmm. I When I switched between them, I didn't feel much of a difference, so I just left them on maximum. But I went and stood near the HVAC, and I was, like, trying to listen and see how good they were at canceling white noise. They're pretty good, but mostly because the passive seal is so good. Yeah. That top level of, like, great noise cancellation, it didn't reach which is fine. They're 100 bucks, but I'm comparing them to other things I've listened to, so that's something I noticed. And then lastly, what was I going to say about sound? Oh, I mean, they sound... So I think the the EQ is a little bit uh, disappointing because all you can do is, is switch between normal, mm -hmm. more treble, more bass, or phone call, like voice. Oh, that's okay. it. Not so much. I'm thinking... I'm sitting here thinking like, oh, you know, they sound a little bit, you know, tinny and a little bit bass heavy, but maybe I can like trim that bass down and like boost the mids a little bit and then I'm opening up the EQ and it's just like, oh, would you like more bass or more treble? So it's not as detailed as maybe I would look forward to, but again, yeah. I think there's a lot of people out there who are just like, you know what? Give me more bass. That's it. Just give me a little more treble and that's it. Or, you know what? I'm on a phone call, put it in voice mode and you're set. So do these yeah. have transparency mode? They do as well. They do. Okay. They have transparency uh, honestly, mode. Of course, they're transparent. They okay. gotta have yeah, transparency they mode. Didn't, that would be that would be like when the essential phone didn't have a headphone. Exactly. Jack. Yeah, um, they do have it. It's I, pretty good. To, I think I'm gonna pick a pair of these up. I do not use these a ton. I use them on the airplane, so ANC would be great. I use them when I'm climbing by myself because I just want to listen to my own music. These are super light. They wouldn't be a pain in the neck. They they feel comfortable. I think 
in a long session, like they wouldn't be annoying. And then transparency mode there is great. If someone comes to the gym that I know, I can talk to them without taking them mm -hmm. out or whatever. Um, and yeah, I think they look really sweet and I really dig the look. I'm like, I've always been pretty anti beats because of that, but I, I just didn't think the beats were that great looking. It just had a B on the side of it. So whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, uh, give up my time and let Adam come sit in my chair for a second. He right. is an actual headphone reviewer. So I'm going to let him dive into these a little deeper, but no for, uh, Z almost zero knowledge Andrew headphone guy who would just wear them every once in a while. I kind of dig them. So well, let's let, let's get Adam in here. All right, let's see it. I'm going to take over the mixing board. So if it sounds like terrible, it just immediately starts <laughs> sounding <laughs> awful. Let's cleaning these off real quick. Would you rather, would you rather listen to, um, cause my phone's in airplane mode. So I only have what I saved offline. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, my go-to is Black Mags by Cool Kids. <laughs> Should I, I'll just go off airplane mode. But I don't know if you have that. Oh, I heard the beat. Okay. Oh. Noise canceling is pretty good. I think. If it's on, unless that's just a seal. Is this one? I'm going to pull a Tim. <laughs> that might be cheating for the is the isolation <laughs> oh, might be true. better with that on top. All right. It's playing. You hear that? Okay. Wait. How do I lower? No, that's right lowering. Yeah. Oh, okay. And it's on max noise cancellation. So if you want to change that and the equalizer, that's your choice. Oh, yeah. I can't hear anything you're saying. Okay. That's pretty good. All right. Oh, the EQ. <laughs> that's the EQ. This is not an EQ. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Let's do more bass. Balance. More trouble. This is going to sound great to audio listeners, me just <laughs> scrolling through the options. I left it at balanced. Okay. Wait. How do you pause it? Double tap? Single, I think. Oh, okay. And then transparency. Oh, now I can hear. Transparency. Okay, cool. So transparency to me was pretty good. Yeah, this is dope. Pretty good because it fit in your ears so well that as long as the mics are pretty good, then it's fine. Yeah. So That's actually one thing I meant to ask you. How's the microphone on this? Have you tested it yet? I haven't done a phone call yet. I'm going to do that before the review. Yeah. Um, they say there's three mics in each for HD voice. Mm -hmm. So should HD sound pretty voice. good. I'll make some phone calls and see if anybody complains. But so far... I like the way they fit for sure. The thing that I like most, I agree, is the transparent like design. Yeah. yeah. But I think it was Brandon. Oh, let me get these on. I think it was Brandon that um, mentioned it. These look nothing like the the first press images. Like the, yeah. the actual first press images, like the stem was really thick and it had like a metal ring around the bottom. Huh. And like, I don't know what angle that was because it's not this. And also me and David noticed earlier the white like bud here. Mm -hmm. was transparent in the first one too mm. and this one's white which is like really i don't know if you could yeah yeah <laughs> i think if you if we cut in b-roll from the review because that's oh, yeah. like i'll have plenty of glorious yeah, so hd like, shots but yeah weird that, those were the two things we noticed that like but these are pretty cool i like them they're pretty like, good yeah not bad i'm impressed nice little case i wish the case was smaller but i get what they're doing here it's transparent yeah. this little 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 nub in here is kind of nice. Is that like a, like a fidget spinner type thing? So Everyone has see. said that at some point when holding it. So yeah, it basically is. Nice. So yeah, that's the nothing earbuds. Sweet. All right, we'll Head take one back more to the mixing board. Yeah, one more quick <laughs> break. We'll swap seats again and then finish this up. This episode of Waveform is brought to you by Mini Cooper SE. So we've spoken about the usefulness of compact EVs on the podcast before, and the new Mini Cooper SE has been one of the most fun ones I've gotten to try. So the Mini Cooper SE is charged for the city and ready to spark up your drive. It's a zippy car designed to be as stylish as the city you drive in. Unlike other EVs, the Mini Cooper SE doesn't look like uh, it's out of a sci-fi movie or something like that. It still maintains a classic design that wouldn't look out of place driving around the streets of New York. So driving the Mini Cooper SE was surprisingly comfortable because it handles like a Mini. It's like a go-kart. Maneuvering through traffic on the way to grab lunch was a breeze. And you can also get up to an 80% charge in just 35 minutes with fast charging at level three DC fast chargers, um, or just charge overnight at your home with basic AC charging as well. But plus, the electric digital instrument cluster inside puts all the important things right at your fingertips. So it's a unique circular looking touchscreen display that makes listening to your favorite music or podcasts or whatever you wanna do on your morning commute as simple as can be. Plus the lights around the screen move as the dial moves. So as you like increase volume or turn up the temperature or fan speed, 
the dial around the outside also lights up, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so when I like uh, trail off at the end of my sentences, you can physically turn me up and watch it. In and the see middle. the lights yeah. go up, which is sweet. Also, I have to say it's pretty refreshing having actual knobs inside the car too. So if you're in the market for a compact, stylish, quick little car to get around the city, then it's worth checking out the Mini Cooper SE to see if it's right for you. All right, we're back. We have a kind of, if, if you're a longtime podcast listener, probably within the first 10 episodes, Marquez and I talked about like having some sort of a game on the show. Mm -hmm. We are at episode 74 right now, so we obviously have not done a very good job <laughs> of thinking of that game, but I think we finally have it. Only and, took 74. Yeah, I'm going to give a little bit of a backstory because just having a game doesn't sound that fun, but there's this very specific reason we wanted a game. And now, if you're familiar with Top Gear, they have a segment of their show, at least they used to have the show. I have not watched the, some of the newer episodes, but... They had something called the the celebrity and the reasonably priced car, where they would take a pretty average sedan, and all of their guests that would come on would do a lap around the track in this reasonably priced car. They would have a giant leaderboard and put all of their lap times on it, and then kind of rank all of their guests. So, so when they like have, it's just really interesting to be like, hey, I'm watching an episode, and you know. Taylor Swift wasn't on it, but Taylor Swift got a uh, 30 seconds, but um, Daniel Craig had 45 seconds. And I'm like, oh, Daniel Craig was on this once. I'm going to go find that episode. So it was always just fun to pit the guests against each other. And we wanted to do something like that on Waveform because we have a lot of guests. We have a lot of new guests. And we like pitting people against each other. Yeah. Like who doesn't like pitting people against each other? Why would you not want to? So yeah. I think our original idea was we were going to take one of the 3310s and make people type in T9. A T9 type test. Yeah, which like- Just write a sentence. Yeah. Everybody writes the same sentence. I, but it's also, uh, so we're gonna have some virtual guests and not everybody has a exactly. Nokia 3310, so it's kind of hard mm -hmm. to do that for everybody. And it's like, it's kind of hard to see. I guess even this might be a little hard to see, but you'll get a little better idea of what we're doing. But um, the other day, I have a friend who has always said that his talent is he's able to type the alphabet extremely fast. And- it's one of those things where when I say it out loud, it sounds like very simple. Um, in fact, the other day at the studio, I mentioned it and everyone's like, oh, yeah, that's pretty easy. Well, he while he was been uh, coding and stuff recently, he recently just started learning how to code um, or maybe a year or two ago. And he developed a website where it just times you typing the alphabet. That's all it does. It times you. It shows you actually like every single second or whatever where you typed each letter, it breaks it down at the end. But huh. we had it at the studio the other day and we all had a blast doing it and realized it is much, much harder than it comes out to be. So we decided why not do this for the podcast? We are going to create a leaderboard. All of our guests from now on who join the show are going to have to do the typing alphabet test and see where they get ranked on the leaderboard and we can officially rank our guests okay. on here. Um, to make it so that it's not just completely blank. We are, everyone at the studio is going to do it. So right now on the podcast, Marquez, myself, and Adam are going to do it. We also have scores from everybody else. Uh, do you want me to read the scores out to get kind of a feeler here before sure. we yeah. do How it? long did it take people to type A through Z a, on their keyboards? A to Z in order. Um, and what we did, we gave everyone three tries because we just took the best score. The best score is almost always their third one. Um, yeah. get warmed up a little bit, kind of get a, a strategy going. We had people deciding which keyboards they wanted to use. The muscle and memory. There going. was like a lot of arguments on like chiclet style versus mechanical because of the travel time. But then you were saying you didn't think that gives that much of a benefit because, you know, if you're using the same finger to type two keys in the same sequence, you're losing time. You have to make sure you're typing it on different. But anyways, we had Tim with 8.53 seconds. We had Brandon with... 9.442. We had Vin with 7.392. Hayato with 6.537. Wow. Michael with 7.569. And David at 8.364. So Hayato had the best score. Everybody's under 10 seconds typing the whole alphabet. Y yeah, but good. some of them were not. Uh, Tim's first try was 14.8. So, like, okay. he, so he, he got faster. He improves a lot. Um, I brought something. Yeah, you did. For our. Oh, yeah. Audio listeners. Never say we don't think about you. Never. This is mechanical keyboard ASMR just for you. So, uh, I yeah, I, I, don't, I don't type much on my laptop. The thing is, I can type the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog so fast. I think there's something to typing actual words, like those typing yeah. per minute things, because we're used to typing those words. Right. Nobody is used to typing the alphabet 
straight. So what I think is fun about this is it seems super easy, but no one really has the muscle memory for it. Um, by the way, the, the website is typethealphabet.app. So typethealphabet.app. Uh, I would love to see scores you guys get. Remember, we only have three tries. I'm sure some of you, some of you out there, are gonna try a million times and and brag to us about it. But um, we we'll see about that. I'd, but type your scores in the comments. Marquez is getting his keyboard set up right now. Yeah. Three tries we're giving everybody, including all our guests. Okay. So I'm gonna load up the site. I mean, I. I don't know. Love to say, you, should, you better point that microphone into a, a nice little. There we go. That's we what go. I like to see. Sounds good. It's pretty That's what good. I like so to see. I'm going to pull up the site. I'm going to pull up the site. <laughs> Type the alphabet. Okay, here we go. So, attempt number one of the alphabet. Four point five three nine seconds. Whoa! Okay, instantly in first place. That's a killer first. That was pretty good. Yeah. All right. Do I? Oh, reset. Okay. Ready? That was worse. I messed up a few times. Four point nine zero two. So I guess you don't even need to write that one down. It's worse. All right. Third try. Last Is there try. anything you've learned from your two tries here? It doesn't require you to backspace when you mess up. Yes, but you do have to make sure you hit the key. So I think Tim, the first time he got 14 seconds, he got all the way to Z and then realized he was actually still on N. So that was the worst one yet. Yeah. I messed that one Wait, up. Wait, can we bad. look at, you can kind of see like your splits if you scroll down. Yeah, so if you if you scroll down a little bit, I got seven on that seven point two on the last one. I messed up on Ooh, on F. It looks like you have a full second from you're at E at point oh, five e. seconds, and F is two point <laughs> yeah. five seconds. You have a two second. You jump can very in there. clearly see where you mess up. This is a fun site. It's this is really a really fun. Site. fun What's yeah. the fastest time we've seen so far? Okay, so my friend who developed this site, I think one point four two. Oh is Jesus Christ! Um, wow. I I mean like. I, I believe him. Uh, I don't know if all you guys believe him. He did send us a video of him getting like one point or like under two, I think. So it's, like it's like zero to six. This times. has been his um. This has been his like talent that he shows to people as, as long as I've known him. So he's uh, he's been practicing. This um, is great. I'm gonna hook up my my keyboard now. As much as I love mechanical keyboards, I mainly like them for gaming. So actually, I type the most on a chiclet style. So I'm going to bring in my the one that I use here at work, which is what I mostly type on. Anyone has anyone else gotten progressively slower as they went, like I just did? I think you're the only one. Hayato <laughs> kept going after his six, and he got down to like three. Dang. Okay, this works. Oh man. Okay, I'm gonna rearrange a little bit here. Yeah. Should we uh, mic up? I'm, your... I'm gonna mic up my keyboard. It's yeah. gonna feel. It's gonna be far less satisfying. But um, all right. For, uh, me... for audio only listeners, Andrew's got the Apple Chiclet style keyboard plugged into his Surface laptop. Specifically because this is the keyboard you type the fastest on, which I think is hilarious. I took a picture of it, so we'll, we'll post that up somewhere. All right. Um, okay, I'm going to swing. Oh, I can't really turn this down because of. Yeah, that's close enough. There we go. Okay. Mm. 5.98. Okay. I'll take that as a start. All That's right. It's not that bad. I, I know where I messed up. It was uh, around like near the end U, there. You, I think. Yeah, I had a one second difference between W and X. I hit mm. Z instead. W, okay. X, Y, Z. Okay. All right. Oh, my, well, my heart is like racing. I don't know why I'm getting so. <laughs> I'm getting like really intensely uh, nervous here. Okay. Okay. I, I'm just literally going to take the L on that one. I messed up and forgot where I messed up. Okay. Okay. Two is just as an NA. Nice. That's 5.249. I don't know. Was that better than my first one? 
Okay. Yeah, fastest that's one. Five point two four. Five point two four nine. That. I'm. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, do we want to do Adam too? Oh yeah. Okay. What keyboard do you want to use? That's I'll the use question. This one. You're gonna okay. use the one at your desk. All right. Yeah, I'll just use the one here. Okay, Go for it. Cool. I'm gonna do a screen recording on my computer. Oh, I so wow. That I can see. That's see that's pure dedication because he could be lying to us right now. But two point eight. Adam is two point way too trustful, trustworthy. I don't know how to mic up my. Oh, you can keyboard? just pivot it straight down. Yeah, That's let me okay. see if maybe I'll just put it on the side. Huh? We're doing all this for an Apple chicklet style keyboard. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. Okay. You wanna, do you want to be play by play or color commentator? I'll color commentate. Okay, I'll go play by play. All right, all right. big stretch. I am kind of nervous. He's, not gonna lie. Okay. He does shake the hands out. <laughs> yeah, sorry. He's gonna take the headphones <laughs> off. No, no, yeah, you can do it. I don't okay. want to mess you up. Yeah. And he's off. Here he goes. Pure concentration. Just looking at the keyboard, not the screen. Five point two zero five. Ooh, bold instantly, strategy. Instantly okay. kicks me off of this. <laughs> Does not look at the screen Towards the, the whole time. It is an interesting strategy though, because you can either look at the keys and get the benefit of making sure you're hitting the correct ones. But if you miss one, you don't see where you messed up on the screen. On my second attempt, that's where I went wrong because I just I knew I messed up. But I didn't know where I messed up, and by the time I figured it out, I was it was at like eight seconds. I like yeah. how this commentary actually sounds like a real sporting event. It is a You're real like, sporting event. Next Let's Olympics, this probably will make it to the Olympics before ultimate frisbee. So <laughs> Oof. we're on a pretty Oof. we're on a rocket ship. <laughs> I agree with you. God, I, hate that I, I think agree. I'm allowed to say it because I played. It. <laughs> I've felt the pain you already. Before. Okay, here we go. All right, getting ready right. for a second attempt. Sounds good. Good start. A little pause in the middle there, but now he's finishing hard. Oh, might have laughed. 6.6. 6. 6. Okay. I think 6. you take 6. the headphones 6. off because... Uh, <laughs> a little bit slower I, that time. I but messed you up, I think. A little bit more wrist movement that in that six point, I believe 6.6, 6, though, would potentially be just over Hayato, which was our best score before. So even while laughing... He still managed to get one of the best scores this out of the studio. good on the chiclet keys, He's man. He's ready. Oh, watch is coming off. I, I was going to ask. I <laughs> dislike watches because it went on typing, so I, I like that he's lightening himself up here. And he's, he's off. off. He's got a he's got a couple strokes down perfectly, but he's got a little a couple of pauses in there. Six point three seven six. All right. So three. you still though was that number? His first time was his fastest. First like was me. fastest. Was you was it faster than yours? Uh, Marquez's first what? time was, was it four point something? Marquez yeah. is the leader. Four point five three nine. Andrew's best time was five point two four nine, and my best time was five point two zero five. Ooh, wow. that's so barely that getting close. cutting in front I, there. Can we just say podcast team? Best yeah. typers in the studio? Let's I go. So. Yeah, I, I think so. Let's go. So we are going to have a leaderboard. Tim is making one. It should be on the screen, but if I'm going to guess it, let me uh let me read it off. We're not going to read the whole leaderboard every time. I think what will be fun is when you bring in a yeah. guest, we can see who they're between. Who's the next um, guest going to be in? We have what a, are they going to get? We have a fun guest coming in soon, oh, and boy. I have no guesses as where they will land. So th yeah. I'm really excited to see. Um, I just want to double check here. So right now, the standings are Marquez, Adam, myself, Hayato, Vin. Then it goes David, Tim, Brandon. Oh, no, no, sorry. Vin, Michael, David, Tim, Brandon. Wait, so Marquez is still the first? Marquez is number one. Currently. How, How do you do first, this? Currently. Is first. Marquez <laughs> has this thing where he is just perpetually good at every... Well, maybe it's the mechanic. You are the, the only one who did mechanical yeah. keyboard. Yeah. I... I I got a 4.8 just now on the laptop, but I I definitely got a better time with the keys. Yeah, well, it's all about the key. It's all about the palm rest too. If you're in your normal typing nice. area, you have a place where you rest your hands. Anyway, Hayato did get to a three, but it was on his like ninth try, I think. Um, yeah, I bet if you got the muscle, memory. I think we could get down. <laughs> um, I will um, maybe I'll ask my my friend buddy Matt to send us a video of a, like a one second one. Sick. But um, but other than that. I'm I'm really excited. I, I'm I don't, it's literally just typing the alphabet, and I'm yeah. super pumped about. Send this us your segment. best times. Uh, no, I, I don't know it. if you can cheat, so I feel like just give us screenshots, and we'll be able to trust them. Yeah. But I feel like that's a good place to end it. That we got to name that segment, by the way. So if you have any good names, like yeah, I would like the alphabet type test, or maybe there's a better, more clever we just version of it. Our like our front runner right now is can you type the ABCs because it has like kind of a are you smarter than a fifth grader vibe yeah, it to does. it and makes it sound really easy, but then it winds up becoming this like 
yeah this uh yeah tough, so there you go. tough challenge every guest from here on out will have to do that at some point that's it for this week on the waveform podcast we've talked <laughs> about a lot of different stuff but uh obviously make sure you're subscribed on the youtube channel if you haven't already subscribe to the new studio channel on youtube which is brand new one new video has already been published live that's the studio tour mm -hmm. where you can meet the team and see the space and of course keep watching the videos on the main channel thanks for watching catch you guys in the next one Peace. waveform is produced by adam alina we are partnered with studio 71 and our intro outro music was created by vane silk